Hello, Blake Rudis here with Everyday HDR and HDRinsider.com. And yes, you can hear the excitement in my voice because I'm super excited that I started using these Blend If things uh, not too long ago in a tutorial. And I've found some ways to use the Blend If options to make your noise reduction and your sharpening no problem in Photoshop. I'm talking this is really cool because it's kind of like a hybrid or constantly working organic layer that will change as your image changes for noise reduction and sharpening. This is absolutely incredible. There's actions here for you, but let's take a look at this sharpening layer. So here is the group for sharpening and look at how nicely it sharpened just my midtones and it's protected my highlights and protected my shadows. So we're going to talk about highlight and shadow protection for your sharpened layers and we're going to talk about midtone and highlight protection for noise reduction. And there's an action here that does it all for you. So I'm just going to jump right in this because you've got a lot to learn. Okay, so a couple weeks ago, I did a blend if tutorial where I opened up the layer styles and I showed a really detailed analysis on how to use the blend if options if you wanted to create a color graded image. But as I've been playing with this more, I found that you can use the same blend if principle to really do two things much better, noise reduction and sharpening. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and close this out for now, and I'm going to duplicate this layer. So I'm going to press Command or Control J to duplicate the layer. And what I want to do is do some noise reduction, because you can see here that I have quite a bit of noise in that background area. I mean, it's not too bad, but it's enough to be distracting. But I don't want to reduce the noise in my midtones or in my highlights, because there really isn't any noise in the highlights, just in that shadow area. And typically that's where we're going to see the most noise and how it kind of festers there. So what I want to do is actually a really strong noise reduction in just the black portions of the photo. So I'm going to go to filter, I'm going to go to noise, and I'm going to go to reduce noise. So like I said, I'm going to pick a pretty high strength here. And if we look at the strength of this noise reduction, it's really doing a good job of reducing that noise in those dark areas, but at the same time, still making it look like pixels. Now, the thing about noise reduction is you don't want things to look smooth and blurred together. You do want to have a sense of grain there because even in the old film days, the image was comprised of, well, well, of several little dots of noise. All right. And that was kind of a grain that would build up and create the image very similar to what we have in the digital world. So if we go too high with that, it's going to look like it's blended and smeared. And it actually does look like it's blended and smeared in our midtone area. So let's just reduce that just a little bit. We'll bring that down to about eight so that it really just does our background area. We don't really want much of the detail preserved in those black areas. So we'll just leave that at about 15% and then color noise can stay about 36%. That's fine. And we'll press OK. Now when we do this, it's going to be a global noise reduction, which means it's uh, applying itself to the entire photograph. And that can be a problem, just like we saw, because if we look at our noise redu reduction efforts, it's, it's taking a lot of detail out of our leaf. But it's also doing a great job of reducing the noise in this area here. So what we need to do is go into the blend if options. So I'm going to zoom in here so you can see how this works. We're going to double click right next to that layer zero copy there. Basically what this panel is doing is it's allowing me to protect the underlying layer from this adjustment on the above layer. And the way I'm going to do that is where it says right here, underlying layer. Now, typically I just want this to affect the shadows and not the highlights or the midtones. So the midtones are actually in, in the zero to 255 scale at 128. So I'm going to move this down to 128 and you're going to see that as I do that, look at the leaf here. It's actually starting to protect that leaf. So as I move this down to 128, that's going to help protect all of the midtones all the way to 128. But when I do that, it's going to have a hard edge. So I'm going to press Alt or Option and split this and move that down to about, uh, it's just 109, it'll work, just about 20 pixels. So what that's doing is it's protecting all of my highlights and my midtones up to about 128 and then splitting it at that 109 mark so that there's a nice feather between where the shadow noise is moving into the progression of the 128. And I'll just go ahead and press OK. So if we see the before and after, we still have noise reduction here, but it's not affecting our leaf. So our leaf 
still is going to have all of its detail and all of its glory. And this is like a hybrid noise reduction layer. Now, I know that it's going to be very difficult for you to remember that. So what I did is in this action, these are blend if actions, you're going to see noise reduction darks only. Just go ahead and press play. When you do that, it's going to open up a new window. After it opens up that new window, it's going to run everything I just did with that noise reduction. And then it's going to do the blend if options, just like you see here. It's at about 100 slash 128, so that's okay. And we'll move this. We'll just drag and drop this by pressing and holding shift right onto our other layer. So you can delete this one. And it's designed so that it'll open up in a new document and run uh, it flattens your whole image and then it'll run the noise reduction so you can bring it in onto your work if you were working or you can just do it right in the beginning get that noise reduction layer and just go ahead and press press on with whatever you're going to do so now let's go ahead and take a look at how we can do this same principle for sharpening so the images you're looking at in front of you has a lot of highlight a lot of shadow and a lot of midtone and the only thing I want to sharpen are the midtones and the reason why is because if we sharpen uh, the darks we end up sharpening shadow noise which ends up looking really bad and sometimes in the highlights we can get these really nasty sharpened specular highlights that just look bad also so how do we do this using the blend if options well the first thing i'm going to do is press commander control j to duplicate that background layer i'm also going to go to filter go to sharpen and go to unsharp mask so with my unsharp mask i'm going to make that about uh, 100 and let's do about 124%, 125%, and at about 1.2 pixels. Press OK. With this, I'm going to go ahead and go to Filter, go to Other, and go to High Pass, and actually High Pass the Unsharp Mask. It, it makes a really nice sharpened layer that really brings out all the sharpening, especially when we use these blend of options. So we'll press OK. Now, if you see here, with that high pass, we've got some color. If we press Command or Control Shift U, that will desaturate it so we don't get any color cast on our high pass sharpen layer. And we can go to the blending options and change this to soft light. So now if you look, we have just added that sharpening to all of our highlights and all of our shadows. And like I said before, look at these highlights. The highlights get these really defined edges on them. And then let's look at some shadow areas. The shadow noise really gets amplified in there too. So let's go ahead and zoom out a little bit. And what we're going to do is just double click right here on that layer one, which is going to be our sharpen layer. And here you're going to see the exact same thing, our blend if options. And what do I want to protect? Well, this time I want to protect all of my shadows and all of my highlights and leave the midtones alone. So how do we do that? Well, this is how we do it. We're going to go right down here and see zero is black. So everything right now in black and nothing is really being protected right now. But as we move this over, that's telling us that we're going to be protecting everything up to about pixel point 76 or so. That'll work. And then we'll split that and move that up to about 100 so that we get that nice kind of uh, blurred edge instead of those hard edge look. And then we'll go ahead and bring the highlights over so that we're protecting the highlights up to about, I don't know, 188, that works. And then split that until about 160. So it looks right here from 76 to 168, all of that is protected. And 128 being right in the middle as your midtones, we've got a nice clean spread of what's being protected there. So we'll go ahead and press OK. So now if we move in and zoom in here real quick and go back to what we had before, that's how nasty sharpened it was before. But look how clean this sharpening is now. Another thing that you can do to a sharpened layer is you can add a curves adjustment layer to it. So I'll put a curves adjustment layer here, press alt or option. And this is basically like a sharpening intensity layer. Okay. Because what it's doing is it's allowing us to modify the, the lights and darks that are present right here on that sharpened layer, that high pass sharpened layer. So let's go ahead and, and turn that curves adjustment layer on. The one thing you want to do here is put a point right in the middle and that will help protect our midtones because the way this works is that if we were to make any adjustments, let's we move this up in the midtones here and then let's look at our high pass sharp sharpen layer there. You see how the whole image gets lighter as we adjust our midtones. The thing about a soft light blend mode is that soft light uh, allows everything that's 50% gray to remain untouched and then heighten anything that's below 
128 pixels or above 128 pixels or above 50% gray or below 50% gray. So what it does, is it makes your lights lighter, your darks darker, but it protects them so that your lights never get white and your darks never get black. So it's a really interesting blending option there. So when we add this curves adjustment layer on there, if by chance our midtones change, then we've just changed in everything that we did with our sharpening layer. So what you can do is you can actually modify the, the dark areas and you can say, okay, do I want those darker areas to have more or less. If it looks like it's turning 50% gray, it's going to be less sharpening in those areas. If it looks like it's going to be more than 50% gray, it's going to be more sharpening in those areas. And we can see that by moving this up and down. You see how the intensity of our sharpening gets a little bit darker as we move that down and actually starts to bring out some of the uh, shadows a little bit better as we bring that out. So I usually call this an intensity layer. And then the highlights, you can bring those up to make them lighter or bring them down to make them kind of fade away a little bit. And that's going to be your intensity of your sharpness layer. So Let's go ahead and zoom out real quick and let's just take a smaller zoom in portion here so we can see exactly what we did here. When we add that high pass sharpen, it did it globally, but then we dodged the certain areas using the blend if options. And then we added an intensity layer on there just to really kind of fine tune that. And again, you're probably not going to remember this and there's nothing wrong with that. So what I did was I made a sharpening mids only. Again, when you press play, it's going to recreate a new document. It's going to do all the sharpening settings that we just did. And then it's going to leave you with this. It's going to say, adjust the intensity curve. So it's going to leave, you want to leave a point at the midpoint, just like we showed before, and then adjust your black and white points independently so that you can achieve the desired sharpness. Press continue. So your sharpening layer is already done and accomplished for you. Now you just have to change that intensity. If by chance you get done doing your intensity, it's still too much. If, let's zoom in a little bit. If you go right here to this group, it's now put into a group, that's what the action does, you can drop the opacity on that sharpening layer. And now you can move that right on top of what you're doing before. Make sure you press and hold shift as you move that group on top of your other work and you're free to go. The beauty of your sharpening layer being on a high pass that has the blending options set is that if anything changes underneath that group. So if I were to add another curves adjustment layer, make things darker, make things lighter, it's going to hybridly protect that stuff. So it's constantly working. It's not like we made a mask for it and the mask changes when our highlights and shadows change. This is a brilliant way to use the blend if options for noise reduction and sharpening. So you can download that action at Everyday HDR. There's a link if you're on YouTube, it'll take you to Everyday HDR so you can download that action and you can come back and refer to this whenever you'd like and follow along. Again, my name is Blake Rudis with Everyday HDR and HDR Insider, and this was how to use those blend if options to really kind of punch up your, uh, your sharpening, but protect your highlights and your shadows, and then how to use the noise reduction so that you're only reducing the noise on the shadows and not on your midtones or your highlights. If you like this, please comment, share. I'm sure that there's somebody else that needs to know this information, so go ahead and spread the word. I'm sure they'll thank you for it. Thank you very much for stopping by.